Right, you can you get a better one gun than you are two. With this gun. Oh, wow. So there's Aki. <laughs> Injuries tend to be the same thing, actually. Why is it in your opinion? Got one. Uh, has Genesis realized its 1974 goal of becoming a rich and famous band? <sighs> that statement, quote, as you know, it, 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 it's, it's not for real, it's like a... The guy's asking, it's a good thing to say. No, of course not. I mean, in, in, in terms of... Well, this tour will probably lose money again. Because you, I always hear the old statement, black by May, and... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, you know, a lot of the places we've played, we'd rather play new places in Ireland, so... and cover all of America. And the show, you know, the, the, the visual side, the lighting and the stage design, costs a lot of money each year. You, know. you look at tonight, I mean, I suppose there are about, there are 1,900 people there. How many? Uh, 19, 1,900, which is really good. The first time you go into a place, you get a, I mean, for us, I think, I'm very pleased with that. It's really nice. We always kind of start, often we start with a much sort of smaller following, you know. Uh -huh. But I mean, you get more money, you probably lose money tonight. Make a bit. It's just the sound and lights cost a lot. Do you, do you seem to be lo maybe losing less each time as time progresses? Like yeah. each tour, you, you get a little closer. To I mean, yeah, we've been really lucky because just the fact that we've never ever supported. We've supported two gigs to Lubri, three in all, all our American gigs. Mm -hmm. And we've always had the whole rig visually, sound wise and lighting wise. Design. We've never sort of skimped on it. We've had, and, and consequently, we've lost a lot of money. But it means we've never compromised. Yeah. You know, because I think, you know, you support a big band, you play half an hour, no sound check, no lighting. You know, you can't. We'd rather do it slowly, but do it the way we want to do. That's how we done. It. We were talking about the midnight special before. Um, when you did musical box on there, did you? Uh, shorten that when you played it, or did they edit the tape later? Um, they edited it. Special. We they didn't do. shorten it. They, what do they? What do they do? They um, cut out uh, the quiet part in the middle. Oh really? Or the through third of the way through? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No, they they. Uh, you're right. We did that. They they wanted a, they they wanted a number about five minutes I remember that you're quite right uh, sorry yeah, I remember that we cut it out because and we're not keen to but they're gonna if they're gonna cut it anyway yeah we suddenly thought uh, I'd much we'd much rather cut out that bit and have the end sort of climax mm -hmm. and get that in rather than to cut out just toward just was the end is starting to build up mm -hmm. they cut out the last few minutes then we do that yeah how come you didn't do anything for the new album instead you didn't watch from the sky as a musical box for sure you still do them, but I don't think you'd, you'd want to promote the new album. It's just you didn't have anything did for, a, for a start, the new album songs are longer. We, we, we chose, yeah, we chose, partly because they wanted those numbers. But if we'd really felt strongly about it, we would have done something else. Um, yeah, we, in fact, we, there was a disagreement in the band, because some of the band wanted to do newer stuff off the new album, which in a way is better. Um, but it's very difficult, you see, I think for a start, television is a lousy medium because mm. it really kills everything, you know. If but try to confine it in 30 minute intervals. Yeah. yeah. But I think when so if someone sees a band for the first time, um, say for what, 10 minutes, if that, you know, two numbers, then um, they'll judge on that. And I know that. Uh, a couple of tracks of the new album it would only be we would play nearly all the new album right but it's only about I say a third of the show I would think you know I would like to have more new stuff but it was it was a toss up we couldn't quite you know yeah are you thinking of doing any more television no, any never again lots of offers we, that I hope is the last television we ever do yeah. I think we made, we made a decision then and there we wouldn't do one again what about films yeah, so that I think I think because of the performance of visually it would be an ideal medium to make use of the fact. I mean basically I, one thing we have to avoid is working too much on the road because we write very slowly 
and we need a lot of we need to balance off the amount on the road, the amount spent writing and mm -hmm. recording. So the use of film would be an amazingly good way to sort of keep getting the music across to people, you know. Now we made a film in England just before the last American tour. The last, the, last, yeah, the last American tour. Disastrous. Absolutely disastrous. It was a complete mess. It was done by a company. It was done without an audience. It wasn't a live gig. There were about 20 people there, but a mock audience, you know. Mm -hmm. Remind of. It. it was disastrous. That, but that, that was just the circumstances. But it would be a medium. <coughs> it's a medium I see us moving towards. And also using it visually too. I mean, we have a few slides, as you've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks beautiful. But I mean, the we possibility we're thinking of is, I mean, we, may, we, we, we have lots of ideas now from don't come off or we want to go different directions, but maybe using uh, moving film mm -hmm. and uh, trying to get maybe projecting completely around the back of the stage. Yeah, there's, there's different ways you can do it, like um, there's the film uh, pictures in an exhibition, which I guess is just out performing in, right? There's the Straub's Grave New World, which is kind of a, was built around the songs. There is, I have no idea, I don't know exactly what Tell's planning to do, but they use that one film segment in, in the live show from uh, Passion Play. Just so many different ways you could use it. Yeah. What direction would you go? Would you uh, take it off your albums, or would you sort of just, you know, really move over into something new? Material and really I thought, yes, no, I think what would be nice would be to do, there's, there's, there's lots of different ways. One is whereby it's based around the stage act, mm -hmm. the live performance, which I think is, is, is if, we, if we were to make something tomorrow, we would do that. Mm -hmm. um, but that is fairly simple, it doesn't involve very much, really, because it's all done. The other thing, I think, is is writing music for a film, which was, didn't necessarily involve us. Mm -hmm. Which is something I'll be more. I can see that happening. My Pink Floyd. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they've done it. Very. I mean, uh, what I've seen there is very much been. They've put. Well, they don't have really so much like songs. They have moods, but uh, they haven't been that precise to the, to the films. Yet. I, mean, I like to do it so you you stay very closely with what's happening on the. You write for that film. I had a feeling that them they'd written on it beforehand, you know, and adapted it. But that kind of thing is something I can see as moving into. Have you been approached yet? A couple of... Nothing very exciting, though. Quite a few. We haven't considered them that seriously because we're so busy at the moment. It just isn't the time at the moment. Yeah. You know. But it, the, the writing... Because basically where we started off as writers, and that side of it is... Yeah, I, I think it is the nucleus. It's the sort of the basis for the band. Um, why did you break out? You started out as... Uh, uh, four of you, who only one of them is gone now, started out as songwriters for other bands. Uh, but the reason we broke, broke out was because it was at a period when no one, people were stopping doing other people's songs. Um, no one would, would do our material. And then first it was very, it was surprisingly simple. It was very much song format, you know, simple structures. Although we called it that, but it was it was complex enough to put most people off. You know, they were saying, "Oh, that's far too complicated." Well, you've been complicated from the beginning. Then. Well, I, I I wouldn't call it complicated so much. Like, that's the wrong word. And I don't think we're complicated now because I like to think it flows. But I just meant it was. Yeah, it does. It was. What happens is half the songs I think a lot. The very first time we ever made, Death Revelation on Decca. One of those songs I could see them being done now. You know, mm -hmm. like, it sounds almost egotistical, but they're they're ahead of their time, sort of thing. You know, it um, wasn't the right time, especially with other people doing them. They tend to like things that not so much well soiled, but fit into categories, and ours didn't at the time. Are any of those songs that you wrote then uh, thinking of resurrecting, rearranging them, and putting them on future albums? We often we often think about this. It's something that we wouldn't do unless. We had quite a degree of success and got uh, and could afford to lay back and do things like that a bit. You with me? At the moment, we have a lot of ground and territory to cover, and so it's not. But that is an idea. We have also an idea of doing a show in England, maybe later on. Oh, I don't know when. This is an idea, but we've got to the size in England whereby you can do it mm -hmm. because you're successful enough. 
and people uh, are being to the bell enough to do a sort of a three or four part performance whereby you we'd start off in the first performance of this say some of those early songs and then would come say Trespass the first sort of album was Us as a live band and we'd all go on just like we did, we, if you get into we didn't like to sort of change the lighting have rather duff lighting you know we all wander on and we used to wander on more or less jeans really and we'd build up slightly whereby Pete would go to the sort of neck, the, the, you'd sort of see a progression you with me we do like say three half four half hour sets with a short break in between to set the scene and then so that people could see how the things progress that's something we thought of I mean, uh, that's like, like sort of being a special you know, sort of, you know something we, we could film out you know. that would be like a one off thing but you can't do it I mean we were thinking of doing it a while back it didn't work out but it would have been premature because unless you're fairly successful it, it's it's a bit pretentious to sort of do that you know like the life history of you know you think of some group of me or nobody, I mean, the group isn't very well known doing it. Oh, it sounds general. wrong, but it's got to, but I think it's something we'd like to do sometimes. The general giant story, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. And uh, like in America, the, the, uh, in our stage at the moment, doing the Genesis story, <laughs> whereas in New York, we couldn't do. But I think it'd be an interesting concert, especially sort of when you don't play in countries that often, you need to have a sort of feeling of something. It's nice to do something that people can go see. It'll never be like that again. It's just a one-off thing, you know. Never again you sort of perform that sort of thing. You do a sense of occasion, yeah. which I think is nice. Maybe something of a foundation that is starting to sprout in a new yeah. direction. Um, you're on this first of success in Italy and Belgium and some of the Germany, I believe. Not Germany. That's, that's been quite recent, Germany. But, but, uh, but Europe, yeah. You and you, you know, you, those are still your strongest areas, and uh, Britain lag and U.S. lag even more than that. Why? Britain doesn't lag at all now. Britain is probably you're, maybe your Italy's about your strongest. Italy, Italy is unbelievable. I mean, that's that's an exceptional. Go to the tennis records. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. Last few gigs we played there. Britain, no, at the moment, the Britain is. Why? Well, up at the middle, Britain has only really happened in the last 18 months. You know, it was very slow. Why did Italy jump in so fast for your style? They started off with the No Crime album, yeah. which I don't know if you're acquainted with. It, it's, but it was it was a very romantic album compared to. And I think, and they, because they obviously didn't get off on the lyrics that much because they couldn't understand them. But uh, that, that particular album was a very good mood for Italy and the country, which is very sort of romantic and melodic. Did you have a mind in your own? No, not at all. Yeah, I mean, Never, never. We never write things with anything in mind, are you with me? The other day we got, in LA, we got very slagged off by a reviewer because they spoke to us and they had, they came away, actually they spoke to Pete, and he came away very vague sometimes, and he had a lot of choices. And they came away with a feeling that we were really vague and had no direction. Whereas in fact we've got an amazing direction, but I mean, what we, what we were trying to explain to the guy at the time was that let me go in and write. We don't, you, you, no way can you sit down and say, write, I want to write in this way, move in that direction. Because what we, the music that comes out, it just it just comes out. You can't control it, you order it. And when it starts to come out, you, you, that's, you then follow it, move in that direction. And the visuals take it that way, and the lyrics go that way, you know. But you can't sort of write to what, you can't plan too much. That's why there's this guy, Ken Wayne, said we were vague and had no drive or ambition. Or or thought about the future. In fact, we have, but I mean, you can't plan until the music comes out. Why, why do you think, uh, even though you're you're immensely successful in, in uh, Italy and Belgium, places like that, it's kind of strange that there are really no no bands coming out of those places that are that are being all invented except Focus, PFM. Yeah. Else. I don't know yet, it's better to tell uh, And you're both out of Belgium, too. I think the rest of Europe is very dwarfed by England. Yeah. England had so much music come out of it. But, and like, all, all the country, for example, I remember PFM, we met them in Italy very early on, we became friendly with them. But then at the time, for them, it, the most important thing was to get to England. You know? That was like the next step up. And I think England has such a sort of 
why it has it been so much music predominating? It seems that for a small country, it's you know bigger than the United States. It's not really a small country, you know. It's big as far as you know. But if you take a look at it geographically, you know, compared to the whole world, it, mm -hmm. it's just completely outdominated as far as its size and just about everything. Now it's music. I would say very much the Beach Boys, of course, are really inspired. They gave they gave they gave everyone so much yeah, kind of energy. Roll ahead, so way ahead of everyone else in the way. You know, that's what's so hard is very few. No, no other band ever done it since. Um, the way that they change from album to album so drastically. You take fairly early albums, say uh, a Rubber Soul, and put it against a Sergeant Pepper type album, and they're so miles apart. You know, the same band, and people got into them. I mean, every time I used to get a Beatles album, the first time, I used to hate it the first time I played it. Because it wasn't like how I knew the Beatles, it was so new and different. And then you get into it, and, and doing that is, is really an amazing thing to do, in a sense. But then they had, they stopped playing you quite early on. Which is, uh... Geeks can be dangerous when they... There's a lot of bands when they, uh, have a wrong balance with the writing recording, when they end up playing them live to them. Uh, it's something we're, we're, we're trying to avoid. Cause you fall into these is, that, is that also possibly the reason that, that you uh, record before you take the music on the road? Um, uh, no, it, it, that's, that's not... Uh, to give the people time to possibly absorb it so they oh, can appreciate it fully. Yeah. That point of view, definitely. Like, the, we will make the, we, after this tour we go back to England. <coughs> and we'll make the next album over the summer. But you won't come back to America um, until November. Give me the album, say, because that's September. Give me a couple of months for you to get to hear the music. Because I think if you listen to the album, say, a few times, and get the music a bit, and then come and see it, it's enhanced that much. Mm -hmm. Not saying that's the way to do it, because I think hopefully if people haven't heard a note and come and see us, they can get into it. But you can get so much more out of it if you listen to it. Again, you know. Hopefully, it's music you can, you can play around with. It listen to it more and get the different things out of it but that, that, yeah, that doesn't come into it sometimes there's so much in a piece and there's only so much you can you can absorb at one time you just have to you know either go to the concert and say you know there's, there's too much there you know and then go home and listen to the album and say oh that's what they're doing yeah. well that's nice I mean, that's really kind of thing that we get off on because we do spend a lot of time put a lot of work and ideas into the music and there's so many little things there which you need time to listen to you know sometimes we find that I, one of the band finds that they suddenly discover a part that someone's playing they haven't really noticed that much it's always been there and made up the whole but they haven't actually thought about it how it you know and isolated it that's after about four months of playing about this new album that you're going to have what directions do you see it taking you know do you have a title Therefore. We'd never get a title until the lyrics were written. And the lyrics were, we've never written um, the lyrics first. They were, we, we might well do. No, I'm not going to say a concept album because I know we, I'm always terrified of that. We might well do another long piece, um, like a sort of stuff that really, I think, those are our forte. Did that really get on with your you know, your style? Yeah. It's, uh, the longer pieces are always our better thing. You seem to, yeah, it's, you, you just I'm have that because, much more yeah, depth. As, as, a, yeah, as opposed to someone writing um, a song and a group arranging it, the, the, although we all write, but it's, someone's written idea is so chained by the time it comes. Everyone has put so much onto it that by the time it comes out, it's obviously miles away from the first thing. So it often works so people can... The long pieces tend to have an awful lot of meat in them. You know, and the fact that they work so well, I think, is because the bits enhance each other. You take, if you could have chopped Suppers Ready up front, right? I think five minute section. Um, sections that sound really good in the number, I think would sound weak. You know, it's a combination of all the sections together that I think make the strong pieces. So you do have some fairly strong ones, like that Apocalypse and Nine Eight. And I guess it's, you know, one big, you know, climax yeah. there, but it's. Exactly. I mean that. That. I mean that's really good. But it's just it's coming at the end of all the rest of the number. It really helps it too. 
And I think some of the early quieter sections, which say by themselves would be weaker, work very well because you need that kind of thing to, listen to, to sort of contrast the rest of you know, the bits around it. So I think this, the next one may well have a sort of uh, some kind of lyrical uh, theme joining, or covering a fairly long track like that. Why do you dislike the term concept? Just that. I'll tell you what, because right now I think of Tales from a Topographical Ocean, which uh, I don't like to write other people's music too much, because it's just it's just my opinion. And my opinion is more about than anyone else's, you know. But that album to me was, was a mistake, I think. It was four sides for start. And when you have something covering that length, I think the lyrical thing has to be, it can't be cosmic. It has to be very strong in sort of earthy imagery. The lyrical idea is, is, is terribly, um, terribly vague and loose. Yeah, they the bar the album. It's uh, uh, it, there's no kind of imagery. You know what I mean? That's why in Suffer's Ready, a lot of the sort of imagery is, is but hopefully, is, it does cover cover conjure up images. Mm -hmm. You know, from Churchill and Justin. Right. Yeah. 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 And exactly, yeah. and it's it's, the, it's that kind of thing. Um, it's like things you can touch. You know what I mean? Almost talking like mundane things, like tables and chairs. <laughs> you know, earthy things. It's so much more important to get that kind of thing into it, as opposed to the cosmic. Uh, you can't have a sort of cosmic theme. It's great to ramble off, but that's the thing about the lyrical idea is that it, it can tie <coughs> the concept. You can tie the whole piece together, make sense of an awful lot of musical passages just through the through the whole of the concept. But uh, sort of you can't do that as a cosmic thing because it's far too rare. Um, do you do you look at music, um, say more lyrically than musically, or, or do you listen to the musical side, or do you try and try? This varies from person to person. Me personally, I look at it more musically than lyrically. That I, I judge by. I can like a a piece if even the lyrics are, are really awful. But I can't like a piece that's got good lyrics. That's your music band. I mean, I think of the band, Beach Boy, and the fourth of lyrics, but amazing music. You know? What about, do you, uh, you mentioned like atmosphere plays a large role in your music, and there's something like the Moody Blues. And, uh, have like, I noticed, I can't really, I, mean, I was trying to think of it, but. There's some songs of the earlier Moody Blues, like on their second album, that you seem to draw a feed off of in a way, and just, you know, you, they turn, just touch, you know, it's not a copy sort of thing. But yeah. I was wondering I if think, you yeah, it's quite possible, because I think people are asked about influences, and most of Beatles, and, you know, it's very strong there. But I mean, I think one's influenced by everything, and it's silly to ever say I'm not, you know. But it's, it's I think, the, the way that this group works is good it, it's the combination of like I really like the Moody Blues the lyrics can be awfully almost embarrassing at times you know some of them but they write some really nice melodies mm -hmm. and I've, I've always liked them you know. um, I feel there's nothing at all and I don't think Steve does you know nor Pete I think it's my, just myself and Tony like them okay, you know and I, I don't think we really draw off them you know and fill them I'm saying it's a musical direction which he seemed very akin. He was very used to very you know, sort of direction of, of uh, my mission a while back. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't mean he's, but like he, he's sort of influenced in that style. No one else got into that much except say Steve. Mm -hmm. And so it's all kind of, if anyone has a strong influence, um, it's very watered down. Or at least it doesn't really come through. Mm -hmm. and Phil, Phil seems to be the jazz. Uh, drummers always are, I think, because, <laughs> because jazz is much more rhythmic. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's like techniques. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, I, I don't. It's, it's not melodic. Yeah, I don't. I, 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 I don't like it because it's not for me. It just if something's not melodic, I, I just can't handle it more than a few minutes. You know. Would you say that a lot of bassists are emphasized melody, like? Because you do your instrument basically, although you would people don't think of it as melodic, you don't play chords on your instrument. You basically are playing bass melodies. Oh, uh, Is that why? Yeah, 
I suppose so, yeah. I mean, I, I, I never really see myself that much as a bass player, because we used to be writers, and I ended up playing bass because another instrument was playing. And we finally ended up playing live, you know. Because mm -hmm. we were all, Anthony, the original audience, I actually played it. Part of two on the bass, you know. I've got into it very much recently, because it, it is that true. You, you can, it's like the bass hand and the piano part. You can change the chords by playing different notes, change the feel of it by playing. Um, bring in different harmonies down and down on the chord, which is a more melodic thing. Tony, Tony seems to be doing almost as much bass work with the with the pedals as, as you are, because you're you're playing the, the guitar a lot. He only plays them once, bass pedal. A lot of a lot of times I've noticed. I play I play bass pedals. Oh, you play bass pedals too. Okay. I play the stage is so high; it's impossible to see. <laughs> I know it's it's. Uh, it's something that I must admit. No, I mean I'm quite. It took me a long time to get together because it's not natural playing <coughs> uh, when you've got a guitar rested on your your knee, you know, on your leg. You play the bass pedal as well. It took me quite a long time to get it together. But once you do, it makes it. It means that I can play acoustic guitar and still fill in the bass. Yeah. So you don't sort of feel the lack of bass. I play bass pedals on most numbers. Mm -hmm. I noticed you're using a, a double speed on double. Double neck. Double neck guitar, and you hit the one was shorter. Uh, obviously, one was your regular bass. Yeah, another was a 12 string. And, uh, was it a bass too? No, 12 string. 12 string. 12. Oh, I see. Was that a custom made or were there a lot of those around? I've never seen a Rickenbacker double neck. It was custom made to the extent, I mean, it's not like I'm Rickenbacker. I just got two ordinary, a bass and a 12 string guitar, mm -hmm. and just cut them down the middle and joined them up. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't do it, but that's how basically how it was done. Um, small feet. Are you into uh, the style of Chris Squire and all that? The Rick and yeah, I, I, think he's, I think he's a really good uh, player. <coughs> you know, much better than the likes of me. I think he really is. He's very, very yes, nigga, brilliantly a really good uh, player. I get less excited by the. Yeah. I prefer the, the material. I prefer the earlier ones. I think. Maybe like close to the one. edge. You know, that was sort of a. That, yeah, I got into that. I, I thought they were much better with Tony Kay. Hmm. I'll tell you, just that there's too much virtuoso musicianship. There's too many brilliant musicians within yeah, the band. Yeah, they're they're technically. You know, and like when there was much. Steve Howe, who was came in on beat bands, was very strong. And Chris Squires, who was a very forward. Musician, I mean, they're basically a very strong party in their sound. Mm -hmm. Bill Brook and that. There was not much room left, there was no room left in my mind for a very outstanding keyboard player. You know, and my. Uh, th th that's not a down on Rick Wayne, I think it's really good. It's, it's really Do you think then their music is, is too strong now? It, it just strong. I feel that. They compete? Or yeah. They don't do what's best. The thing about Genesis, I always feel it always does what's best for the band. Even if it means that someone is not that happy with his part, I mean, he'll always keep working and he gets something happy with it, but we'll do what's best for the band composition rather than what... Um, it's frustrating rather than what they can do, because very often we as a band are capable of playing much better, more, not, not showy, but more original things, or often. You know, Steve can make some incredible sounds. You listen to each person and they sort of play around by themselves. Mm -hmm. and you often hear sounds, you think, oh, you know. And, but uh, we won't just put something in because someone can do it. It sounds good. We only put it if it's right for the song, you know. Which is why I found, uh, yes, recently I haven't been so excited about it. Right, like I was listening, the uh, first time I listened to uh, Selling England by the Pound, I was waiting for those little guitar virtuoso things. And I, I only saw, found two of them on Dancing with the Moon at Night, but after a while, I started listening to the whole thing instead of listening to the parts and got it on. But I noticed. Did you, uh, well, do you find that some of these parts call for rather monotonous bass parts? No, uh, not particularly, because I normally like, if you think of the, the, the apocalypse section, mm -hmm. the little keyboard solo, because I started off on a sort of, we started off as a sort of jam in the last room. What happens is it's not so much like the band plod on. What normally happens is you know, the solo 
it, it's normally often fairly tightly arranged, so it develops round. Very, so the, the, the backing section will start sort of playing on here, and the guy will start working out his solo. Then the backing section will start changing chords and sort of things, and so it's like a combined part. You know, that's why the solo is never really just like a straight solo. Like what's happening underneath is often they're all going. Is often quite complex. It's nice. Yeah. Are all are the solos pretty much arranged uh, uh, in advance, like like uh, pretty much played the same every night? Like I, I think I read someplace that, that Tony generally works out his solos. Yes, in band plays them the same. I I don't think uh, well, another band I think would. Do. Maybe Steve and Phil the most, who were good at improvising. We improvised a lot in the rehearsal rooms, the half it's written, you know, just playing around. But on stage, um, <clears throat> we can't get together yet. It was, it's happening more and more, the little bits here and there improvised. It comes with confidence. You know, we're not that good performers outside Pete and Phil, really. And we're, in, we're not confident enough, I think, to play our best on stage improvising. It's more like, you know, we write these pieces and then we, we sort of play them. Yeah, yeah. And you, you'd be surprised, I mean, we get an awful lot of life and new energy into them. Little things just make a difference each night, you know. And just, just we don't do much, um, I know very few people who are good enough musicians to improvise. Compared to number who do actually improvise, you know. Yeah. And just, just that, that very minor rhythmic change in Wash of the Skies just already added. Yeah. There's, there's a little thing that can, can, can change our numbers so you don't feel much pressure. I know, you used to get, like, on your concerts, a lot of cries and boogie from people who I didn't know you. The, the, the mood of America, since we first come over, we haven't done that much work here, but it seems to have changed an awful lot. Obviously, we're getting a bit more well-known guys come to see you, but even in towns you've never seen before, people are moving away from just listening to sort of boogie and rock and roll. And you want to listen to things that are more demanding in a way, mm -hmm. take more time to get into. I really felt the change in that in America. And and why would you say this change has taken place? Anything you know is like... I feel because yeah, some of the Americans get into things, they get into them very quickly, very strongly, it's like out and out, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there's, there's, there's a move, there's what? And then they get bored, you know? Like yeah, exactly. But the way they do it, they go into it with such energy, and they now move into this sort of, sort of music, which, like yes, and which we play. I still don't think they're doing it fast enough, though, because there were only 1,900 people, and how many were there last night? I bet it was packed. Well, you know, always drag bands, and you know, anyone who well, yeah, and and will play it. these riffs, these awful riffs, over and over again, like fog hat. Yeah. And I mean. I, I just started looking around at the people. I get so bored with some music. Uh, yours is the first concert I've stayed to all the way to the end. <coughs> I guess that takes it more than anything. Yeah, well, right. I mean, I mean, I, I never want to be down on that because basically that kind of thing is, is much less a musical listening thing. It's a kind of uh, like dancing, like soul music. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's except I I, far, I prefer um, good soul music to, to that. You know. It fulfills the same purpose as people get up and sort of bounce around. Getting back to what you were saying about America. Yeah, and I've really felt a change in mood. The, the, the people get, there's a mood people want now to, they're, they're not happy with just hearing a band playing riffs and boogie and jump up and down. They want to take it a bit more seriously and listen a bit. Uh, I've noticed that a lot. Even you know, like I said, you know, getting more popular, so you get more and more people who know you coming to see you. Mm -hmm. But places where they don't know you that well, we've hit for the first time. There's been a different mood since... The first time I came to America was Christmas before last. Was it? Yeah. It wasn't that long ago, really. And, uh... Oh, I've got to work it out. I guess it was, too. Anyway, <laughs> not that long ago. <laughs> right, and um, I've noticed the change since then very much. Would you say that maybe it's politics that sobered America up, or what? No, I wouldn't say it sobered it up at all. I, I didn't really quite mean sobered it up. I meant uh, 
and they just want they want to change now they've had enough it's because they get into things so quickly well lost my trip but i mean they, i felt like they 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 saturate themselves with it too but they'll, they'll do the same with this sort of music you know mm-hmm. except it, it's hard to saturate because there's always more to find in it but uh so it's like it's like the americans go in and they like head like that they just sort of rock and roll and boogie and then suddenly they, they just can't face it anymore. They, they, they've had so much heat on them, they just look around wild-eyed. You know? It's like the singles on the radio. Mm-hmm. They play them to death. You know, we've been traveling and there's like a, a dozen songs now, which we're like, I just got to turn off. I used to like them, you know? Same. I, I can't have um, What's that Elton John? Benny and the Jets, a single by Elton John. I mean, the first time I heard it, it was very original, the way they tried to get... It's a very distinctive sound to it, you know? It had something that, but I can't bear it. Right? That has to know. That's the reason all I ever play is yes, Genesis, Focus, is because I can't tolerate anything that is simple. I need something that I can listen to 20 times and hear something new in it. Because I guess well, I mean, I, I like kind of thing because it's, uh, you, can just, you can just go further and further into it, you know, and keep finding so out. It's like, it's like reading a, a longer book. A book that often takes a bit of getting into. Like, I don't know if you, so often when you get into the classics, a lot of the Russian writers, you start reading them. You, you, have, to, you have to make yourself read them because you, know you know there's so much amazing stuff in there if you just get into it. Yeah. Have you been reading any of this stuff lately? Uh, yes, no, but not recently actually, but I mean over the last few years, yes. And I, I, I've had books that I've, I've had to have two goes at because I haven't been able to get into it. But it's good because they're because they're accepting people. I mean, they really are brilliant books sometimes. But you have to read the first two chapters. You have to work so hard on them to get in. Kind of like some of the Russian ones, especially the depressing Russian ones. Yeah, and uh, but then you get into it, and it's amazing. It's an incredible book. Some Dostoevsky, I think. Like that. Yeah, and for some of the sort of music, I think. But it's so much more rewarding than you know. Mm-hmm. I guess to go back to what I guess a lot of people talk about, you know, you've been really working at it for five years now, and you know, you haven't met a lot of fame, really, you know, at least for a lot of those years. Looking, you know, you know, do you think it's worth it now, you know, going through all of that? Was it you know, was it as difficult as some people like to picture it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it was, I think. Um, I don't really think, was it worth it? I don't think, you know, you have at the stage when you say, no, it isn't, or yes, it is. Um, you have any reservations? Uh, yeah, there's just, there's one thing, things have moved, have really moved the last two years. We'll be on the road about three and a half years now. Um, there's a band in writing it. The writing side it doesn't really matter. If only keep writing, it doesn't matter whether you get successful or not. Except for the fact that you always want to. You want to. You want to be. You want to have to be the biggest band in the world, and people will come and see you. Not so much that, but I mean not not even not the biggest. But you want to have lots of people to come and see you to get into your music. Because I think it's, it's a way of saying to yourself, yes, you do write good music. Yeah. It is an ego thing. No point saying it's not. You know. Yeah. But it, it's just that. Uh, Early days in England, you wasted an awful lot of energy and time. Because I think, especially this kind of music, you can only keep it up for a certain length of time. Especially with a combination of five people, where there's a, there's a fair amount of friction. Mm-hmm. You can only keep working at it for a limited amount of time. Do you see Genesis succumbing to those frictions after a while? It won't, it won't be quite like succumbing to them. It'll just be that the time will come when it, people have to work move away, you know, move with, work with different people. They're exhausted, the... Uh, well, they're providing we keep the egos out of it, mm-hmm. and it's a band thing, you're okay, which is what we've done so far. Um, because then everyone gets into it, and it's... Uh, it's when people start, in the writing stage, as I've seen bands, they start pushing... They stop thinking about the band and think about themselves and their music outside the band. I mean, I see, hopefully, people might get into sort of solo projects, because a lot of us have material, we all have material that isn't right for the band, or 
the bands can't get into it as a band, and so it's just, it's just neglected. You know, we write, I reckon we use about a quarter of all the material we write, and we have within, you know, that can come out within the band, and so it's frustrating. But uh, that, that'll be like separate. And then just something that... Rather than trying to push that sort of thing into the band, yeah. You know. What do you plan, I suppose you've gathered, you know, over five albums now, quite a bit of material then. Are you going to, what do you plan to do with it? I mean, the solo album, I don't, you even, I don't, I don't even think much about it. I, is you, I, when, when, when anyone from this band, I think, does what you call a solo album, it won't be like a solo album, it'll be, I think we always, we all need to work with other people. It'll be a guest album, right? Yeah, it'll be an album where they'll just work with different people. Probably no one of any, none of us will work with anyone with any reputation, I think, because we all have other people we sort of work with. Well, what musical directions we work outside the band. But I don't see it getting very far for a while yet, because the band is so demanding. But it's something you can't neglect, otherwise you suddenly start resenting the band a bit, mm -hmm. from stopping you getting out. Um, you're own. Because it's like there's five guys with five directions, mm -hmm. you know, and they combine and they make a sixth thing, which is Genesis. But they need to let the five things go a bit themselves sometimes. Would you say the sixth thing is a, a product of the five? Is it inside yeah. the five or outside of them? Is it a separate entity? It is in a way. Because it's, it's like, it's not, it's, it's not until you get the combination that it, that it, that it materializes, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why we could never work, I think people like, could work that much by themselves because they, they, we've, we've always had so much criticism from other people and help that it uh, be hard to let it go. Yeah, very often it takes us to, and so many solo artists don't realize this. Okay. But I, I think mm -hmm. the solo side is something that that's, we don't think about too much yet. We think about long term, not just in the near future. Mm -hmm. we, want, we want to step up our rate of writing and recording. You see, we take a long time. We never yet ever made an album in under three months. Mm -hmm. We never will, because we take a long time to do it. Because we work so, it's not so all fine, it's pretty nearly all pretty happy. It's not like, you know, everyone says, yes, let's have that. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's a feeling in the band, and maybe one guy's left behind a bit, but there's enough for the rest of the band to carry and make it feel right. So it takes a long time to write it. But the next album oh, I made is going to be, we made a live album, which just came out on Buddha. Um, Another one besides that Genesis Live one? That's the one, Genesis Live. Yeah. That's going to come out here now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fine. But and what about uh, this? Uh, the, but that was done with the mobile unit, right? I mean, what, 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 this, is all, this is all about recording, right? I, we did like studios. We play about 60% our full ability in the studio. It's, a, it's not a good atmosphere. It's like going in at 12 and having to be your best until 2 that evening, you know. Mm. You, you know, you can't do it that way. So we, we're, we're, we're going inside a house in the country and we're going to live there and write it. And re we would play in the rehearsal room because we're relaxed and bring a mobile unit in and record in the house. So it won't be like a live album that you'll have, I think, the sophistication and subtlety to the studio album because it'll have all the facilities. But I hope it will be relaxed enough to play our best yeah. and be able to play a bit more of the atmosphere. The studios are very dead. You know, I don't, I don't mind. Yeah. And it means that we can, when you want to get like a, the kind of sound which you only get in a big echoey hall, um, see what's some majesty, you go out to a church or a nearby hall and do it. Because studios, it's all so false. And people say, well, you can record it dry they add all the echoes on them. It's not the same thing. Mm. It isn't the same thing. Because the music has to affect you when yeah. you produce it. The way you play it. And it's atmosphere, something, it's just not the same. Yeah. Does it, has your music gotten down to the point uh, where, you know, like, some of these things like, you know, the Who's and the the people didn't even know what they were playing until it was all, you know, mixed hours, you know, weeks later and a place halfway across who, the world. Who the people, the, the band? The, the Who? The Who, yeah. And uh, has your music gotten to a point where you don't even hear when you're playing what it's going to actually sound like to be? No. It's quite true that the guy who mixes it has a complete base. You've got to have trust in him. Mm -hmm. And you know, Richard McPhail, who left us, he was the guy we dedicated an album to him because he was like a big love. He was really an amazing force in the band. He was just like, he was just a sound mixer, but he, 
in a way he's been very close because he's a has a the similar musical taste. He hasn't played anything, but he has the taste. Mm -hmm. We have comments in him, but it's getting Dave, Dave now, the engineer. I mean, he, you have to feel confident about what they're doing. But what we make on stage is pretty close. I mean, if Dave can reproduce the stage sound, we don't rely on anything much outside outside the stage. If he can get the sound to the audience, how it sounds to us on stage, then it's great, because it sounds perfect on stage. That's why we, we did a club, the Roxy, a while back, um, which is amazing because it was just like, it's very small, we used to use some stage equipment mm -hmm. and a, a very small house PA, which had little bits of people just to balance it out, a few echoes, you know. It was basically our stage sound and it was great you know, because of it. I, I think, it's fine, but I, I don't like to feel too removed from the fact that you think that you're, you know, it's too much outside the band that you, the sound all comes from us and it's all there on the stage, so we're not, it's not like we're removed from it, like some bands, you know, who use tapes and stuff. Well, I mean, it's funny to use them, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, there's a, like, little effects. Are you with me? The voices, doors slamming, a few geese screaming. They're like things that sit on the music rather than anything basic, you know. You and, uh, Tony have been major forces in composition, musically, haven't you? The band, uh, how do you go about, you know, could you outline, you know, from the idea to when you get that sound down on the tape, you know, how things are going? It's, it's very hard to explain. I, I tried to, uh, because uh, the way it works, the only, Barbara Sharon is a writer uh, from Music Express. She heard some rehearsal tapes which explains it a bit more, because you heard the way someone will come with a bit, mm. say a chord sequence and a melody, and the band would try different ways of playing. You'd try it once, soft, loud, but, um, someone will come with, the very, with an idea, and then it, nothing much would happen until someone else adds some energy into it, you know, mm -hmm. um, a, a cross, a part that goes with it, a kind of, it's like a development. And, and people play around with, with some of the basic chord sequence mm -hmm. and it starts to take shape but it never gets off the ground unless people have something really positive to add and it, it, it's where it's the whole band can really add things to it um, but things are, are their best you know it's a difficult process to describe it, it's like uh, we work very closely in a sense you know it's not like some other material which we arrange like uh, a build-up, it's like a sort of structure, a build-up, you know, and uh, obviously the basic instrument being played on is, is, is the sort of basis, but it's just a kind of progression, and often the final thing is so removed from the original idea, you know, just because very often someone's brought in the chord sequence and it's been gone on and the ideas have come and this, the whole thing's progressed, and the end thing, we've cut out the original idea, and it's gone on from there, but, but it's been the cause of the, it was the original cause of the thing, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's basically the way we work, and the, to date the lyrics have always come second. Although at the very early stage there's been a feel of what the lyrics are about, yes. and music's had the feel, you know. You must, you must think that the lyrics are important to some extent because... Oh, extremely important, you put I wouldn't... The lyric, you include the lyrics in all the albums. I mean, I personally some more to music than lyrics but I mean the, the lyrics are amazingly important and uh, I mean sometimes we we may get into this question writing the lyrics first we've done it already in some songs they on albums but songs you've written the lyrics come first but um, they come they started to materialize at a fairly early stage before the numbers even anywhere like finished the theme for the lyrics, you know, and they take a while to write, so we've got to work them slowly. Uh, I never underpay the lyrics, but I think they're part of the mood of the song, you know, you've got the sort of melodic movement, but they conjure up images which go with the thing, you know. Are there any progressions or things that you are, you know, naturally, come naturally to you in life? I don't want to get too technical, but 
there's your, I guess, your sound, so to speak. You know, like, it runs, runs through everyone, like, you know, other basic chords that you sang your music around, and so what are they? But they're all, they're all really. Yes. I wouldn't, uh, there are sounds, you know, mm -hmm. <coughs> kind of, uh, each member of the band has a sort of style of sound which they bring into the band, mm -hmm. which I think are very distinctive, but I wouldn't, Made the sevens uh, strongly there, but I, I wouldn't say any. I wouldn't say any uh, particularly. No, I think it covers the whole spectrum too much to be able to say in any kind of sequence either way. I'm very fond of hymns, right? Mm -hmm. I think you can often see that in the chord sequences we use, and especially in uh, suppers right towards the end. Yeah. Your hymns have been a very strong influence on the sevens. But when we originally at school, the original three of us, um... Thank you. No, it was in Godalming. It wasn't college, it was like the car place you got to the age of sort of 17. You know, the, the place we went to when we went to school, we went from, you go from about 14, 13 to about 18. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're like, they're like private schools. There was music always at a basic interest to you all? Did you all think you'd go into it from... No, we didn't go into it all, actually. Uh, in fact, Tony was at university. He was there a year ahead of me. He was at university when we basically got together and left school and formed the band. He, he left for a year. It was a tryout. You know. Him least of all, I think, ever thought he'd play in the group. I never thought of him. Because um, I, never, I, never, I never really wanted to be a performer, I find, uh, well, I'm, I'm not a natural performer on stage. I still feel so uncomfortable and very nervous, you know. And it gets better all the time, you know, but that, it's just because we write it and we have to play it. And, um, it's obviously we have to be on stage. But I never saw myself performing on stage. Yeah. I thought I was going to be a little unnerving. Yeah. But it's going to be better. That's why we still haven't got the confidence to do that much improvisation on stage. We're still kind of nervous and, uh, as a performer, because that, that's why we tend to stick to. It's like you know we write them the pieces, we raise them, we construct them, and then we like sort of change our density and play them. You know, I mean, when you think how orchestras work, they have like the two sections, the composer and the players, and the players can't write a note normally with any value. But they're extremely brilliant technical musicians in orchestras. So the composers have a very free hand. They can write some very complex passages, which is a great way to work. Which is why I think I think the, the, the standard of music in, in rock is often very low. It's because the writers and the players are one and the same. It can be a benefit, but very often it's, it's a bad thing. Um, because they, they, have, they don't have the time to, to achieve a very high standard in either thing. Do you see the, 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 the strength, I think, of sort of what we call rock or pop or whatever you want to call it, in a complete general term, is, is the crudeness. It's the sort of raw quality. I mean, there's nothing in an orchestra like uh, like a lead guitar. There's nothing that rough. But I mean, that's the nice thing, you know. I mean, I'm more a melody man, sort of uh, volume, power, sort of aggression man, person, you know. But I mean, there's, there's, there is something about the electric guitar that, that, that you don't get an orchestra that is, is really fine. It's, it is like the sort of the raw quality of it. Have you ever thought of a uh, group writing, you know, like you always, have, I suppose, have that latent tendency to write for something else because you started out as writers, yeah. to write for an orchestra or an electrified orchestra or something? Uh, yeah, no, not an electrified, I don't see the point of an electrified orchestra, really. Um, yeah, I think I can see the direction taking I mean, if things go on. Is that we start to be able to use our writing more. We could, we could write for so many different things. Mm -hmm. Films, play, television things, all sorts of things. I mean, so many things need music to go with it. Which is where I see us possibly moving in that direction. Major you know, prolific composers are the singers, and they do not play like John Anderson, yeah. Peter Gabriel, why he does play, and I guess he's primarily the same. And 
I guess that's as far away as you can get from this. Is that the case, do you see? And the composing of this band is very much a five-way thing, I would say, because when we get down to writing, um, obviously when you see the band, Pete is, is the visual front, and he is really the main thing that happens on the stage, mm -hmm. visually. And to me, we always, they always focus on the same way, man. It's just right to the music, but when we get down to writing, he's... It's like this, 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 this five guys, and he's like those sort of... Uh, he plays the piano, that's where he's, he's like, something like, it's like this five musician thing. And the fact that he's a singer, I mean, he could, he used stuff written on the piano, so he's just like one of us, it's not like, uh, because he's a singer, and, and doesn't have to spend a lot of time concentrating on playing. Um, I see the point you're making, actually, I can see it some but in us, no, it's just like you get, you get five guys with their ideas. And Pete plays the piano, and that's where it's come from. It's really amazing that, mm -hmm. judging by the rest of us outside the film, it was surprisingly introverted in the way on stage, or self-conscious. It's amazing that Pete can take the whole weight, he was there. And it's like it's the rest of us. Mm -hmm. The time just to sit down and play without feeling the need to perform, actually. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Steve, particularly. Yeah, he's on, he's off in the corner sitting yeah. down. And you used to sit down, now you're standing I up. I used to sit down, I stand up. The reason I stand up is because I wasn't, I was playing really out of time with Phil. Somehow I could stand up and look at him and go over to, or go over to him now again. He's like, I've, I've played so much better with him. Do you think, uh, Steve is going to get out of his chair more. Is it, he doesn't have a time problem at all, sitting in the chair. Oh, I'm sure he does, but I don't think it's... It was to me, it was just like positioning. For some reason, Pete moves about a lot. And, and Pete between Phil, he's moved between Phil and I, so I never used to... Whereas now, I've a kind of difficult passage. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Phil and I are like the rhythm section where I'm playing bass or sort of... I play a rhythm guitar, which I really enjoy. Um, the way, the way, we're normally providing the rhythm sound, and so I need to play with him more than anyone else, I think. You know, okay. you know it goes a rapport and I feel it. Yeah. And so often Pete used to stand in the way, so I used to, and that would just do me in completely. You know, he had to be there at the wrong time. It always happens at the one bit, I really need to live with Phil. We used to sort of play it together. Pete would be there, <laughs> head in the way. Mm -hmm. So if I stand up, I can move forward and backwards, and that's the main thing. Does it get distracting, you know, Pete leaping around all so much? No, I, I'm not necessarily that tall, but I cast them off for you know, a lot of women. I must have cast them off, but I concentrate on what I'm doing, you know. On, on the music. Has there ever been a mishap, you know, in the way he's moving around, he's bound to trip over a cord or smash a stick or something? Oh, yeah, he's pulled off the stage and broke his leg. And he's broken people's equipment and not drunk kids over and things. You know, I mean, it's not beautiful mishap, absolute chaos. What did, how do you pick yourself up out of that wreckage, you know? With a sense of humor. Uh, I know, because this music is kind of just demanding and serious, we can't, too many, I mean, we come across very serious, I'm sure. But Pete helps that out, so does Phil. But there is a lot more sense of humor within the band than people. That's why I think, I would love to see a band like, in a way, it's good that we're not, able to be too cool because I mean we, we're still kind of bumblers you know what I mean mm. there, there is no humor I could I can find no humor within a band like Elf or Yes so I would love to see one of them fall over <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, do you know what I mean that, that kind of thing did you look at me for a yeah Oh, that, that kind of thing I think, is, is, is what I like because it, it add a little humor to their music yeah which is, I mean, sure, take some serious about, but be able to laugh at yourself always at the same time, which we always can do. That's why those, those kind of things. I mean, there's this beautiful mishaps, you know. My equipment burst and burst in flames in the film, just after the flame. Yeah. That kind of thing, you know, things have fallen down. We've had a gig once, outdoors, and there was a big bat off right behind us to take the wind from the train. In yeah. the middle of the number, it came down on us. Fly over the whole stage <laughs> and five little white bumps. <laughs> and to get out of that, you know, I mean, you just gotta come out and collapse on the stage. I mean, immediately it was laughing at some. It's been very happy. In the beginning of the second side of the live album, I was in unaccompanied bass pedals all over my life.
Yeah. Let's go. Pete's very good picture because he puts across the speed. But we're not quite as serious as we seem. Mm -hmm. um. So, to get on there, you know, you keep a presentation with you. Not really. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's the people, actually. <laughs> you can get used to it, I'm sure. You know those interactions of Pete They are. Would you know one of them? Could you read read one off? Because I always love to print one of those, but I you can't really. I wish I'd take it on stage. Do you know one? How they evolved? I do, but I'm not going to watch them. I just cast my mind back. And, <laughs> so if I think about it, I do. But like, see what happens? At the end of each, they just evolve. He thinks about this, works them out. Those poems take many. Um, between each number, see they started because we, we, we spent, it's like these little pieces we go into like 10 minutes, we prepare ourselves, you know, and then the end of the piece it's like finished, it's sort of whew, white and brown, and then you're like, because there's a lot of technical things involved in getting good sounds and playing how it effects and stuff, and it's like you set up for the next number, you change your settings, you tune it, you get this right, that right, that's like a two or three minute thing. And that's how his story was originally developed, as we, we were like so long in between numbers. I get an idea. We were like kind of prepare ourselves for the next piece, sort of thing, you know. And that, that was the reason, but it was the best way we You know, it's also perfect. I remember I was reading once that uh, he was making an introduction for uh, the uh, Moon at Night. And he was describing you know, the lady you know, she walks in the way. Uh, no, she uh, was, was describing that lady on the moonlit night. And some guy yelled out in the crowd, you know, she eats shit. And she goes, uh, no, she doesn't eat shit. She, you know, sits on waves and doesn't break a bit of his meter. You know, he says it in a sort of a poetic way. Yeah, he's very good at being able to, uh, when everyone just to shout out things. Very often they're not being aggressive or like, you know, funky. They're just like, they get excited and they come out and they're like, you know. Yeah, some loud <laughs> roar, really. <laughs> and it's good to be able to incorporate that and to, to use it and not sort of ignore it or, you know, say shut up. Or anything, you know. Has it ever gotten anyone, like, have there ever been any points where, you know, in the beginning where you were heckled because your style was so different? Yeah, a lot of them. Especially when we were, like, playing club. Cause I was, you know, it was guys, wanted to, guys wanted to dance to it. And we used to play a lot more soft acoustic music than we did that. And uh kind of awful something. You know, we plowed on pretty nasty heads down. <laughs> the old thing and now that you know that pays off in your sense of humor now. We lost it from it, but it was hard to keep it then in some sense. Are you out the entire time? No, I'm alright. Okay, um get him out on Friday. Right. You know, this is an announcement from genetic control on a limit a four foot limit on human height. That's wild. Uh, did uh, how did that come about? It seems special. It stands Pete. out. The lyrics were written by Pete, mm -hmm. and uh, that came out. That the whole thing came together. It was it was something at uh, the, the time it was written in England. There was a scene like that. Guys, the theme, the theme of the song was buying houses and evicting people and then selling them for vast profits. Right? Doing work slightly and then, then, then selling them. Um, there was a whole rap that you did. Real escape. Reality. And uh, it was the thing of the paper that the deep read. I was on the television too. In a documentary form. And that's what that came about. The music was just... The lyrics came after the music. And it just, you know, it stands out as being something that's so integrated. My last question. Okay. Um, <laughs> is, you know, you keep wondering, you know, all the rock musicians are young now, and some are getting old, like the Beatles, and then you see marked changes in the way they approach things. I was wondering, what do you think you'll be doing when you're 50 or 60 musically? I hope I won't be making a living out of it for a spell, because you end up compromising. I have no idea. I, I would imagine I'd be doing something that isn't necessarily involved with me. Yeah, you have anything like in the back of your mind writing? Can you mention something? What's 
to me. I never thought there's all sorts of things I wanted to be. I was a mere professional golfer. And it's instead, I don't remember that when I was 60. There's an awful lot of things I can see. Uh, this whole band could, could get into an awful lot of things, apart from what they're doing. Um, it doesn't worry me, it's exciting when I think about it. But uh, music's too much a part of, of my life to, to, to be able to sort of have anything that took up a big part of my time. It wasn't music for a while yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's the need, the more successful you get, then the less the, the, the need to get to make out and get out to people becomes. You become just, you're just as happy playing it yourself with a few friends. Just playing music and doing it rather than just getting across to people. And that's something I see become more in the band. You know, I'll always, always when I'm a little bit writing. You know, yeah. it's just, it'll just always come out, I hope. But I won't always necessarily want to do anything with it. Hopefully it will become, after a while, I mean, the very later on in life, it would just be like a hobby, you know, thing you do for pleasure. Um, and you may spend the major part of your time doing something else, you know. Some wild project of living. Well, thank you so much. Okay. It's really mm -hmm. a pleasure.